Pipe Network presents. On this episode of Season 4, Let's Talk. And then 2018 came. I was like, okay, let me try this again. Because I really want to do something more than blogging. Na parang feeling ko, I need, I need to talk again because I've been at home for so long because I, I stopped working in 2014. Because sabi ko, I want to rest first from the car corporate world and let's see after a year if I want to go back or not. And I and enjoy ako sa <laughs> content creation. So, yun. Uh, hindi, na, hindi na ako nagbumalik sa work. Before we get into this episode, make sure to share this with your family and friends. And if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Rajiv Show. Hey folks, welcome back to The Rajiv Show and I'm your host Rajiv Doreswami. And this show aims to help reach out to those who are currently struggling in life and to remind you that life is indeed beautiful when you're inspired to make it your own. Hey folks, welcome back to the Rajiv Show. Oh man, I don't know how to introduce this person because um, I collaborated with her and she's a loving, warm person and um, she made me look sexy. That is one thing that... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, one thing that I really want to take to heart. She made me look sexy and uh, I, I hopefully we'd, ha we'd have more collaborations in the future. But I digress from the introduction. I want to introduce my guest, the legendary, the phenomenal, the majestic peacock from Singapore, Romo Miklat. <laughs> parang ring announcer. <laughs> Gra grabe, parang wrestling naman yung dating. <laughs> Thank you, Raj. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Rajiv, for inviting me to your show. Finally, it's happening. I know, I know. This was, I don't know, five months, four months overdue. <laughs> yeah, but, I think it used you, you sent me a message back in June. Yeah, that was when they were building Yeah, that was the pyramids first time. And all. <laughs> mm. yeah, the one where they were building the pyramids and all, I remember, yeah. And then I sent you a message mm -hmm. via messenger. The Egyptians didn't mind. Mm -mm. But yeah, <laughs> aside from the, uh, before we get into the meat and bones of this conversation, could you give a little bit of background to my listeners about you? Well, uh, I am Rama and I am the host and producer of the Rama Miklat podcast. And as Rajiv mentioned, I, I live in Singapore, but 100% uh, or more than 100% Pinoy by heart. And um, basically, that's it. <laughs> oh, but uh, I do social media content management. That's my side job, so... That's wow. it. <laughs> this is a super different... short. Walang masyado, promise. <laughs> this is an opening, uh, opening stuff. Um, I want to unbox social media content uh, manager. I want to know what that is all about. But before we, before I ask that mm -hmm. uh, thing, let's 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 travel back in time. And then, um, mm -hmm. if you and I were classmates in high school, I gotta ask. I, I kind of ask this almost mm -hmm. every time. Is that if you and I were hi uh, high school classmates, who were you in high school? Uh, are you the person who is in the books, competitive in sports, uh, or uh, you know, with with guys a lot, popular, you know, cheerleading and all that stuff? Who, if you and I were classmates in high school, who were you in high school? Who would I be in high school? I would say I'm that low key. And that my awaen type of person, you know, when people have this person that they really hate, I usually become friends with them. I, uh, I actually nadala ko yung ganong personalities, personality ko until university time, nung time kasi university. And 
I would definitely not be the sporty type because I've been wearing my glasses and I've been avoiding sports. But and also I love the not naman love rather. Sorry, let me change that. I am the person who would get along with guys mostly. Um, I still have friends who are girls. Kaya lang, sometimes, you know, yung, yung sa high school, there are a group of people na minsan, oh, si ganito crush ni ganito, tapos di ka na nila papansinin, mga ganon. So, I, th- I, I just... I just feel na may it's easier for for me to to engage with uh, with guys kasi straightforward ang lalaki eh. Na parang walang issue-issue sa kanila. Gutom ka, sige, kakain or ayaw mo na nito, lalaro ka, go, ganun. Hindi hindi katulad sa babae, medyo complex yung relationship with women kasi or with girls kasi. So, uh, yon, that I think I'm very low key. Pero yon, dorky because I always I've been wearing my glasses since forever. So, yon. I'm that girl with glasses. Interesting. That is the first interesting of this conversation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one thing that I've noticed is that now, I, I'm sure uh, the, in your social media, you you actually give this away. You you do cycle a lot, which is a uh, kind of weird transition, I'm sure. <laughs> I uh, find that yeah. interesting. Because... Uh, mm-hmm. wh- one thing is I uh, one thing I related to that, and um, I didn't expect that was going to be a part of the con- uh, conversation, is the fact mm-hmm. that um, um, I used to cycle a lot in India, uh, and uh, wow, <laughs> talaga yeah, and in comparison to for sports or ano uh, for, for leisure oh yun ang babalik tad na tayo ako na yung <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah that's the main point of the Let's Talk series uh, when yeah. I used to go to uh, to, uh, animation there was a year in my last years where I used to go um, uh, and cycle all the way to uh, sing to to college to animation I was introduced to an animation college for two years uh, it, it was a crazy experience I think for two years um, I don't really remember the years but uh, I used to cycle a lot and um, <laughs> there were very funny moments uh, that I used to share uh, and and uh, the thing about that was, uh, it, uh, when I used to go to, to college um, w- during the years, uh, the, the the communication was a lot of a, it was a barrier because people in in the college in that community they spoke Canada and they speak so fast. It's like uh, you're watching Chinese fly, uh, Chinese words fly <laughs> faster than the thing. <laughs> and uh, it was really hard. It was really hard to uh, sing, to catch up with what they were saying. But uh, the the funny part about those those moments was the thing that I dreaded the most is that um, uh, when I used to travel, I used to cycle, uh, and I used to cycle to college and back. Uh, there were days that uh, it would have been easier to communicate with my teacher. I used to send a message on Messenger to ask him if we have class, and then mm-hmm. uh, there were certain days that without any warning, you know. He would force us to come to college only to only for the security guard who was actually guarding, and to tell to tell us that there were no classes, and it was so embarrassing. <laughs> uh, imagine a brown man's legs are shaking because he woke up the two hours just to find out that oh there was no God. class, and then <laughs> heading back. It was crazy moments. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, during power trip, man. Yeah, the funny part about that was it was no rodeo, and it's funny how I survived mm-hmm. all of that because um, during those those uh, journeys, I used to compete. I- I'm sure you've seen those images and memes where you see the buses, those big ass buses where the passengers are so full. The, as uh, those Indian memes with the buses, people are flowing out of the buses. Mm-hmm. There were, I was yes, I'm, I'm with, familiar with that. Yeah, I used to compete with buses like that uh, on a daily basis. I used to compete, and there were wow. sometimes that um, I I got my I got myself dinged a couple of times by motorcycles with uh, oncoming uh, saying uh, out of uh, saying. There were also times that I even cycled with a when my cycle was actually tilted into half. And uh, oh my god! Yeah. Uh, the one the scariest scariest experience that I've had 
was this mm-hmm. um, uh, there was this moment uh, when we, I was coming back from school and uh, as a cyclist I, I didn't have raincoat or anything so whatever I was wearing it was it was weird this is funny this is an ob- weird observation that I had every time I wore black I was always gonna come home drenched. It was so funny. Uh, looking back at it, it was actually true. <laughs> and I realized this uh, for a couple of days. It was very, very weird. So I was often, I, I tried to avoid wearing black, but that was mostly the uniform that I had on the particular days. <laughs> it's like you have no choice. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, Yeah, imagine that coming home with drenched up face, water in your face, and uh, <laughs> it was really, really weird. And um, but that experience coming back from that experience on one of these occasions, um, we, uh, my friend and I, uh, we were splitting, and we were talking for some time, and we were splitting, and it was rainy. And then, of mm-hmm. course, I was heading back, and um, I went under this uh, bridge that, on top of it, was of course a train track. So as I headed into the train track, the water level almost raised, above, was so high that it occupied at least 50% of the wheels. So I managed to get past the underpass with, with the water flooded and I managed to get onto the track, uh, to the other side of the road and I, I think. Out of the blue, my mm-hmm. mind said I wanted to turn back and take the other road uh, route back so that at least it's much easier to go home. As I turned and mm-hmm. I went back, As I was going back, I noticed the water level was higher than expected. So I nearly, luckily my brakes were so strong at that time. If had not been, I would have flipped myself and I would have gone straight into the water by myself. So I slid my I cycle know. to towards the towards the safer area. I think I slid to my right and then the wheels nearly touched the water. And I said, okay, I'm already in this area. I might as well go go ahead and go home and yeah that was uh, the most scariest that I remembered out of all the weirdest experience that I've had <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I gotta and you survived you, and you're doing the podcast now yeah yeah <laughs> true true I gotta ask you I'm sure you had some crazy stories with the cycle as well I mean those cycles are so phenomenal uh, I think they need to have their own podcast episode with me as well <laughs> <laughs> Um, with cycling, well, by far here in Singapore, it's pretty much uh, safe because we have a dedicated lane for cyc for for cyclists, mm. and we have we call it the PCA or the Park Connector Network or Connecting Network. I'm not sure if it's connector or connecting, but still we call it PCN, and it's a uh, no connecting the parks all over the all over Singapore. So if you just follow the 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 path. You can go from one park to another, so you can actually um, cycle the entire, uh, no, the entire Singapore, oh. if you have the if you have the strength to do it, because <laughs> it's it's around, I know it, it's around more than 100 kilometers, I think. So, but it's possible. So, yon. So for for if you're asking me, uh, uh, if I have any scary. Story so far not uh well I had one when where I sumem plang because um I uh, we were on the safe side the man of the roads this is hmm. still on a park connector uh of of the of the road a park connector part of Singapore hmm. so whenever we go out very safe na man I always have the helmet the proper gear and all because it's very important kaya lang there's this person because I'm, I'm using a uh, road bike mm. me and my husband are are using road bikes uh, when you are at the park connector marami kang kasama dun eh. there are joggers merong mga naglalakad ng dogs may family mm. may family nagba bike may family nagjog so it's a somewhat scary because the, the the possibility for you to actually hit someone with your bicycle mm. that's a very that's that's also somewhat scary pero sometimes kasi road bikes are thinner uh, yeah. it's it's mas ano siya eh, mas maliit siya it's thinner it's lighter compared mo siya sa mountain bikes and there are those that we call the fat fat bikes you know the the the, the ones with fat tires Yon, yon, your fat bike. Eh, no, when I was moving towards the, dun sa direction where we will go, hmm. na, nakasalubong kami na fat, na, na may bit-bit na fat bike. Huh. 
Uh. Eh, the road itself, I was on the left. And uh. then there are people passing by, walking, jogging on the, ra- on the right. Uh. Tapos mukha kasalubong ko siya. So ang ginawa ko, I had to um, move a little further to the left. And then he was approaching very fast yung, yung, yung approach niya. And he was like, it was as if there was no one <laughs> sa, sa kalsada. So ako, I had no choice but to talagang ano, move further pa. Tapos yun, nalaglag ako sa may damuhan. As in, ano siya, <laughs> ang laki ng sugat ko sa, sa legs. Uh-huh. But that was it. Nothing pretty, like super, super scary thing. Kasi ano ako eh, medyo takot din ako sa ganun. Like, um, that's why we only go out kapag medyo konti yung tao. Usually, uh, Sunday or uh-huh. minsan, middle of the day. Kasi sometimes it's scary to go out like say mga magbabike ka ng 5 to 7 p.m. Kasi here, 7 p.m. may araw pa. Uh, medyo matagal yung pagbaba ng araw dito. But what's scary is that you have buses, you have trucks, you have you have cars. So, minsan kakabog yung dibdib mo when you go behind buses. But it's okay when you get used to it. So when you get used to it. Pero yung, mas, for me, mas it's scary na maka yung possibility to hit a person kasi the liabilities man <laughs> you don't wanna be ano you don't wanna be sued because of ano of, of uh, hitting someone yeah, so yun yun lang yun lang ang medyo scary thing that happened to me but nothing so so as as much as yung nangyari sa iyo <laughs> yeah oh well, oh mas grabe sa iyo <laughs> it's, it's all part of the experience of it i kind of enjoyed it though i kind of miss mm-hmm. it uh, and uh, one thing that I often uh, often people are scared about me when I, I'm here uh, is that um, from La Trinidad to Baguio is much more easier than it is prior to my experience in uh, Sing in India uh, and it's like mm-hmm. just walking distance it's funny many people are uh, I mean out of out of love yeah out of concern they have, they often share that you know you, you better be safe get a cab and all that stuff but Mm-mm. Uh, aside from cycling also there were certain days that um, my cycle uh, the air would get punctured and you can't really ga- get mm-hmm. a, a a decent uh, person who could fix your wheels up there were moments mm-hmm. that uh, i had to walk alongside the cycle and you know uh, it was uh, torturous but it <laughs> um, it stretched my legs a bit but yeah it's it's fun mm-hmm. So you're also cycling in ano in La Trinidad. I did, but uh, now my cousin has kind of taken that um, that cycle, and uh, he's kind of uh, he's taking mm-hmm. it to his own, and he's enjoying it. So um, mm-hmm. if he's tuning into this episode, uh, cheers! Shout out to him. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> return the bike, please. Not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but wait, uh, Raj, um. Are the roads in your area where you live right now eh pataas ba siya or is it like straight uh, straight road diretso lang ano ba From from what mountain I know bike of, paggamit mo uh, oh yeah the mountain bike oh no I'm talking about the plateau and the geography of uh, the area From what I yeah. know of apparently uh, La Trinidad uh, uh, Baguio is more uphill uh, it's more challenging uphill Yeah so I was I was actually thinking mukhang ano to climbing talaga yung ginagawa just ko good luck talaga sa legs mo noon. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, I, I have a story to share there. Uh, but uh, coming back to the geography of La Trinidad, I think La Trinidad is more flat. Uh, uh, the area mm-hmm. where I stay is more of flat uh, thing. It's surrounded by mountains. So when we are heading mm-hmm. into Baguio, it's basically we're heading into a mountain itself. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this funny story that um, I think, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I remember I was working out and stuff like that. And then we had class and um, uh, the, it was late night. I think I was with my mentor. I, I don't remember what the story was, but my mm-hmm. ass and I did legs basically. So, of course, you know, when you work out legs, you, you basically the ass, the legs and mm-hmm. the, lun- the lunges and all yes. that. The, the anatomy um, the lower part was really uh, shaking it, it was funny <laughs> it was shaking in pain and uh, this was during the time pre-pandemic where I used to have a conversation with my mentor 
and then uh, we, we we sit down and we talk for hours and hours and I think around six six o'clock we take a hike. There were days that I drop mm-hmm. him off to his uh, uh, drop him off to his house or I drop him mm-hmm. off to wherever he's planning to go. So there was a time where I decided, okay, since he's going home, I'm walking. Or I think he uh, he went he took the other road. I don't really remember uh, exactly the specifics of it. My legs were pain in pain, and um, the mm-hmm. uh, during that time uh, when it, it was a rainy season, it was so hard to get mm-hmm. the uh, uh, hard to get a ride, so hard to hitch a ride. So what I had to do was I had to remedy that in the sense that. I had uh, since the because uh, in in our uh, mall in Center Mall, there is this line where it goes specifically to where I stay, you know, and the line was mm-hmm. so long. It uh, even an anaconda would say that's even longer than me, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> that was how long it was. So basically, the waiting hours, my legs could not really compensate with the patience and standing straight for at least uh, one hour and thirty minutes. I could not compensate. So when there are moments like that, when I see the lines are very long, I have no choice but I have to, you know, take a hike, you know. And then, oh yeah, uh, it was raining and the line was long, the queue was long, and then I had no choice. Luckily, I'm I'm the guy in high, in college. I'm the only guy who's always ready with mm-hmm. an umbrella. Whether it's sunny, it's raining, McDonald's shows up in front of your face, I'll still have an umbrella next to me. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, I remember my legs were paining. I, I, the one thing I love about uh, coming back from from Latrini, uh, from Baguio to Latrini, that is, it's downhill. So it's like mm-hmm. <laughs> you can, I could literally roll all the you way from roll. Baguio, yeah. <laughs> and then ooh, I, I'm at home already. You know, that's how easy it was. Uh, there was a yeah. time that I attempted to go the other way around because uh, the jeeps, getting a jeep, was tough. And I did that, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I kind of surrendered in this area called Slaughterhouse, which was actually a few five miles close to the main city entrance. Where I think I kind of gave up there and I took a jeep. So, but that still counts as a uh, thing, effort. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't yeah. remember what was the effort. Occasion. Effort. Yeah, there's so many stories. Actually, uh, there was also a story that we had a play. And I don't think anyone remember. I I don't know if I remember telling the story to anyone in the episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a play, and uh, it was somewhere around uh, March or Feb. And when it's March or Feb, it's always been a banger season. When, what I mean by that is um, March, Feb. That is when they close out Session Road and they block out Session Road, so traffic is so bad. In the sense that if you are yeah. planning to go to school. Uh, you have to you have to leave 4 a.m. in the morning of the previous day in order to get there as soon as possible and sleep in in the college before you can actually enter because that's how bad it was uh, during the afternoons. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was this day that uh, it was so bad. Um, we had a play and then I had an 8 8 p.m. class after that. So uh, I in my character um, my character was this villainous character and. Uh, we had we it was an impromptu thing so we had to pack up our stuff and uh, <laughs> it was funny enough uh, i had a blanket i had everything and i had a big bag it was uh, because it was a lot of stuff and a lot of uh, thing the 8 p.m class was never excused for all of us so i had to go there i had to uh, i had to be there i was so dead tired because we had two plays at that particular day and our our uh, play, uh, the location of our play was somewhere near heaven. <laughs> it was that high. <laughs> so you had a lot of stairs to climb in order. I think the lift was so damaged. Uh, you could not really go up. You have to go through a lot of stairs in order to go to the thing. And that's how crazy it was. I've heard that every time the Pinagbenga, yeah, yeah, whenever they have that festival, it's it. It's so fun because there are a lot of people and it's the flower festival festival yeah. right pero yeah. ang dami daw talagang tao that's why whenever sure. I ask my husband cuz he studied uh Jun sa north na hmm. sa, sa Baguio hmm. I would ask him before while we were dating na oh let's go there I want to see the flower festival sabi niya no you won't like it sabi niya I know you too well in you <laughs> mag-aaway tayo pagkatapos <laughs> nung flower festival kasi wala tayong sasakyan pa uwi so yung pagod mo and then you will walk yung ang haba-haba ng lalakarin mo 
And sabi niya, no, I don't want have I don't want have a fight. <laughs> That's a very good man. Salute Matalino if, eh. Yeah. Salute to him if he's tuning in. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, that was a sca- that was crazy. Uh, that was a crazy experience altogether. Um, that, uh, after that whole thing, oh man, uh, that was also one crazy experience that I thought I would die on the spot because right after that event was done, after our play, we had the two plays. Coming back to the story, by the way. That we had two plays. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was back to back. We had a one hour break or something, and then we could not go down because you are up in heaven in UB. I'm sure you've seen those buildings that are high. We were on top mm-hmm. <laughs> on one of those buildings, and that was where our play was. So if you go downstairs wow. and go and have lunch downstairs, and you had like a 30 minute uh, thing break, by the time you reach, you're already halfway through the end of the play and <laughs> so we had no choice but we had to stay there and uh, <laughs> man after that the class was done uh, I had no choice because after 8 p.m. there was no jeeps anymore there was no jeeps heading home so I had no choice but to, mm-hmm. I had to walk and that was the most exhausting part I thought I was gonna pass out like I mentioned I, I luckily there were some few sari sari stores around the area and I had to re- re-energize myself and I managed to make it through. I mean, I had a couple of chips. That I had 20 bucks or 30 bucks in my wallet and I had the chips and then I went back home luckily and safe and sound because I had the blank. I I, I think our tro- uh, one of our prop was my blanket, one of my blankets. So imagine mm-hmm. the weight on the bag and I was wearing a suit. I looked like James Bond with the, pr- planning to go to high school or something. <laughs> that, that was... <laughs> And uh, that was my thing, and I, I we never had I never use makeup when it comes to play. I'm so naturally, unnaturally healthy. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, that that was uh, that was an interesting journey altogether. But yeah, that, <laughs> enough mm-hmm. about me. Let's talk about my guest. <laughs> those are the experiences. <laughs> I, I love those experiences. Those memories are worth sh- sharing. Um, one thing I want to ask though. Um, and I'm gonna ask this in Tagalog and English. Paano ka na pad sa Singapore naman? <laughs> oh, um, actually, my husband had he had a job offer, and so he he took it because it's a very good opportunity, kasi. And then, of course, non-negotiable for us. <laughs> Pag kinuha mo yung isa, dapat kasama ako. I mean, we're very clingy to each other. Yeah. So, and one thing then kasi we don't have kids pa. Yeah. So, it's best to stay together. So, mm-hmm. yon. That's why after a month of, uh, when he got here, after a month, sumunod na ako. And then, we stayed here and the rest was history. <laughs> yun wow. yun. Wow. That's, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Second interesting of the <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we actually get into one of the things that I'm curious about to ask, asking you, uh, we're gonna have a short break, folks, uh, and we'll be right back after these few short messages. If you want a great vacation place this summer, we got a sweet deal for you. La Casa Vacanche in Batangas is a great place for your family to relax and enjoy. Go to pipenetwork.co slash lacashavacanche to use the promo code TRS to get 300 pesos per booking. And don't forget to follow national safety protocols, folks. Cheers and enjoy your stay. What's the scariest story you is know? It a book, a movie, a TV or show? Is it something that happened in real life? My name is Andrew. And I'm Come Ninja. join us as we talk all things horror. Mm. The frightening, alarming, real life tales show. Out whatever whatever you're, you're listening, listening to, to right now. Hey, folks, welcome back to the Rajiv Show and OMG. <laughs> Um, on the first half, okay, uh, I, I kind of admit uh, that I spoke a lot, 
But now I'm gonna make sure that my guest is gonna speak a lot in this part, this part of our yeah. conversation. <laughs> so there's no escape from my guest. We will try. <laughs> and again, let me introduce from Death Valley. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> we set. Pinangatawan na talaga wrestling yung introduction. <laughs> because I kind of like the the last one that I said. Even I kind of freaked out when I said that. Oh, that was an interesting uh, introduction. The peacock number three. <laughs> ding 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 ding. <laughs> the peacock from Singapore, folks. If you haven't noticed, I'm still in communication with the beautiful peacock from Singapore, Roma McLeod herself. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yun ang Thank mo. you, Rajiv. <laughs> <laughs> yun ang nickname huh? mo. Papalitan ko na sa, G- sa, sa chat natin. Yun na yung nickname mo. <laughs> Pwede bang ROMs na lang? Mas <laughs> maikli yun eh. <laughs> Hindi kasi it has that elegant je ne sais quoi, creme de la creme kind of thing. It's like, oh, the the peacock of Singapore is messaging me. Oh, ganun di ba? <laughs> no? Oh my gosh. Ang haba pero na. Roms na lang. You stay with the with roms. But yeah, whatever. Do whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And now let's get back into the conversation. Um podcast I want to combine these two the thing that you mentioned in the beginning. You you are uh, mm-hmm. yeah, as mentioned in the beginning, you are a podcaster and a social content media manager. Um One thing is, what got you into podcasting? Um, podcasting has been, well, let me just give a, a bit of a background. Um, I've been doing content. I've been a content creator way back in 2014, I think. It all started as a, like you, uh, hmm. Rajiv, you, you also had a blog, right? Yeah. Or you still have a blog pa? May blog ka pa? Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm still contemplating on whether deleting it or not. I think I'll leave it there. But yeah, I I I, ha- mm. I still have a blog under my name. Mm-mm. Yeah. So yon pareho tayo. We had I had blog. I had I, I've been blogging since 2014, mm. and then nag transition because that time yun na yung nauso bigla yung vlogging. Like mm. YouTube became a huge hit. That everyone is doing vlogging, makeup blog, and all reviews ng products. But mine was concentrated on makeup, so makeup, skincare, anything, <laughs> anything shopping related. Yan. Um lifestyle in general. Tapos um, fast forward, I, I, it was fun. It was fun to have to do to do blogging, but it's also magastos because mine is more on luxury makeup makeup products. Yeah. But at the same time, after two years of doing that, I was like, I want to do something else. I want, because I feel like medyo nagplatu na yung yung journey ko sa ano eh blogging. So I wanted to try YouTube. I I wanted to try vlogging. Unfortunately, maririnig nyo to in 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 other episodes kung saan ko man siya na, because I've been repeating this na I think vlogging is really not for me because I feel so conscious sa camera so like you know when you talk to the camera and then hi welcome back to my channel you know those stuff but yeah. I don't feel that I can share so much of my life online yeah. on a daily basis that's just me it's it's not I'm not against anyone if that's your thing if that's your jam I don't well that's good for you but right? it works hmm. it's just that on a personal level sa akin I feel like it's not my thing because I value my privacy but I also want to share a part of my life online because hmm. I wanna I wanna inspire people so so long story short I tried vlogging uh, hindi ako nag-succeed <laughs> so after that 2016 Sabi ko, parang I wanna, I wanna do something else since I'm not successful with vlogging. Mm-hmm. Let me just go back to my blog. I will do write-ups and reviews, mm-hmm. and then on the side, I wanna try podcasting. So to- 2016, I think, was my first try to do podcasting. I did three episodes, and man, it was bad. <laughs> it was so bad. 
so bad that sobrang alam mo yung parang nakakaantok pag pag pinakinggan mo na parang walang kalatoy-latoy talaga yung yeah. <laughs> sasabi ko kasi I was kasi I was basically reading whatever it is that I have ah. on my blog ah, that so it's one. like I <laughs> Yeah, so into so like four years ago, no wala na ako ng loob huh. na I don't think it's not working for me again, ganyan. So ayun, huh. continue lang until I stopped it again. I had three episodes, but that's it. And then I went back to blogging. So this time naman, 2016, I was blogging na about my fitness journey, how I did my lifestyle change. I was trying uh, to be a minimalist. And then, uh, what else? Uh, more on ano, travel vlog. So, mo, yun naman, more on snapshots lang and ano, mga mini videos. But there is really nothing. Parang hindi ako mong nagsasalita. But basta views lang, whatever it is that we 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 saw, ganyan, ipapakita ko lang dyan. Those, those are my type of vlogs. But really not the, yung may conversation on the video. And then, 2018 came... I was like, okay, let me try this again. Because I really want to do something more than blogging. Na parang feeling ko, I need, I need to talk again. Because I've been at home for so long. Because I, I stopped working in 2014. Kasi sabi ko, I want to rest first from the car corporate world and let's see after a year if I want to go back or not and I and nag-enjoy ako sa <laughs> content creation so yon uh, hindi na hindi na ako nagbumalik sa work so again going back to 2018 sabi ko I want to do I know I want to do pod I want to try podcasting again but this time I'm going to have a different approach I was more, I know, I'm I'm more ready, I'm more prepared, and I, this time I really want to do it. Not because I just want to do it for the sake of having something to do, but I want to put my heart on it. Na parang every episode should be, they should know a little bit of me as a person, as a content creator, as the person behind Berry Duchess. And that time I was, I was, ano pa. I was clinging on the the brand of Berry Duchess because Berry Duchess is the blog. That's the that's make up whatever vlogging you you can see when you search Berry Duchess. You'll see my face. You'll see my swatches. You'll see my reviews. Because I was so, hindi pa ako confident. Na oh my god, will I use my name? Will I use my real name? What if they don't like me? Mga ganong question. Yeah. And then yeah, I'm happy that I I, I tried it and the. After a year, so I started March 2018, I guess, or uh, sorry, 2019. Hmm. I was that was also the time that I was trying to do something because I lost my mom, and I I needed someone to talk to, and I was I was lonely, and I was trying to figure out things in my life, and. Uh, It was a good decision. Na parang I needed to ano, I need someone to talk to. Eh. So parang since I cannot find anyone to talk to, I'll I'm going to talk to myself. And then I'm going to put this conversation with myself over the internet and maybe someone who has, you know, the same ano ba, um interest with me would would listen to this or maybe I'm going to help them if they listen to whatever I say or whatever episode I put out there. Hopefully, makatulong siya. That's the thing naman eh. With whatever I do, I always make sure that there is value. Because you know, Rajiv, every one of us, each of us, we can do content. Everyone can do content. Even a five-year-old can do a content. But the thing is, ano ba yung quality ng content mo? Is it trashy? Oh yes, may mga nagiging viral. Kahit basura yung type ng content nila. I'm sorry for the word, but that's really, ano eh. That's yeah. really... I, I cannot find any other words to use eh. But a content is a content. Nasa sayo yan or nasa creator yan if you will do something of value or meaningless. Hmm. And for me, personal ano ko yon, personal uh, thing ko yon that whatever whatever I, I put out there, it should always be of value. Na parang it should also be timeless. Na parang magagamit ba siya hindi lang ngayon, magagamit din ba siya in the future? So, yon. Yon, that's why I and then okay naman siya, nag-okay yung yung flow nung yung show. 
Mm-hmm. It all started with ang akin lang naman nga eh. Hindi pa naman the Roma Miklat podcast eh. It started with ang akin lang naman because I would always end the show with ang akin lang naman, blah, blah, blah. My points, talking points. Mm-hmm. But then I realized it was too... I was caging myself because if I use the Filipino language and I have international followers, I think I'm excluding them. What if they want to listen to my podcast, diba? So I was like, okay, I'm going to remove it. And then fast forward to now, I have the, I changed it to the Rama Miklat podcast. Wow. That's, I'm tempted to say interesting because I don't want to go for five. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do it! Do it! <laughs> Interesting, interesting. <laughs> That's number five, 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 five. Oi, four pa yun na, pang patatlo yun na. Hindi counted yung kanina. Five uh, na. Five na ba? <laughs> nililito mo ako, nililito mo ako. <laughs> it's it's funny. Uh, I love I love how you built that story and um, the passion. I mean, the passion and the heart is there. And um, that's one thing I love about the stuff that I've learned from all the co- conversations that I've had with the, the Let's Talk series that everybody's got the heart and uh, the expression. Uh, I just had this joke that I thought about, uh, folks, for those who are, who, uh, who are tuning in, prior to this uh, conversation, um, I, I told Roma Miklat that we are not going to do a vidcast and she was already freaking out because she didn't have anything on. She only... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, have, I don't have anything like my face, like you, whatever you see on my Facebook page and on my uh, on my website. That's nothing, nothing close to what how I look like how I look right now. <laughs> Sobrang moisturizer lang yung meron ako, guys. <laughs> the funny thing was, I was advising her, girl, you need to get the foundation up. You gotta get this up. You gotta get that up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, wow, social, social content managers, I never expected that to be, um, to be a, a, a kind of work job kind of thing. Uh, Mm-hmm. Coming back to the interesting stuff that I have, that's number six. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm so self-conscious. I'm the one who's counting myself. I'm not supposed to be doing that. Uh, coming back to uh, the interesting thing, I'm just purposely saying it now. Uh, <laughs> that I did uh, <laughs> blogging. It was out of curiosity. Um, a small, small story on how I used to do things as well, uh, because uh, when when I started out blogging. Uh, I think I joined WordPress and I don't really, for me, I don't really know the years anymore. I, with this pandemic, it feels like I've been stuck at home for almost three decades. So I do not know what Forever. year it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, inverted day, uh, triangle day. I don't know what day it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, but coming back to uh, the, the content that I created, the first time I created and I went to uh, WordPress, Uh, it, it's funny <laughs> that uh, I didn't know anything mm-hmm. about blogging. It was just that um, I was looking at everybody's blog. It was so neat. It's, everything is so neat. And then the community mm-hmm. was so kind. I had no idea whether I was journaling. I didn't even know that there were niche, niches. I didn't know any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, I had to change. It, it's, it's weird. I had to change my name, Rajiv Doreswami, .wordpress.com to Raha the Base because at that time, I was so heavily into uh, bass. I was a bass player uh, at that time, mm-hmm. and I was so obsessed with the bass. So I kind of came, came up with the moniker Raha the bass. So I converted Rajiv Doreswami mm-hmm. to Raha the bass. It was kind of weird because I was using WordPress, the free, free version, not the paid one. When I transitioned mm-hmm. back into uh, <laughs> when I transitioned back into thing, I had no choice. Tr- I lost my URL rights which is uh, rajivdoreswami.wordpress.com. Mm-hmm. So I had no choice but to downgrade my blog to Blogger. Mm-hmm. And uh, one thing led to the other. I was actually releasing content up until uh, the podcast became uh, saying what it is today. And, you know, many people supporting mm-hmm. with all the love. Uh, it was kind of competing. Rajivdoreswami.blogspot.com is, I think, still there. I'm not planning to delete it anymore, coming to think of it. And um, mm-hmm. hopefully coming soon, uh, the Rajiv Show 
uh, blog will come up again. I, I'm still contemplating on whether to start that. And um, uh, and yeah, uh, the the podcast grew also the same way. I did not know anything in the beginning. I think it was the same. It was mm-hmm. so robotic, so robust. The how I, I was presenting mm-hmm. my first episode. I think the time when I did it with the time I joined, um, I joined Anchor. That was when uh, I saw an ad by uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, and uh, mm-hmm. and he made it popular. You know, Anchor. You you can just you can just have a podcast as though you're answering a phone call in your phone. That's that's how simple it is. Mm-hmm. And I kind of bit into the marketing. Uh, but I did not know that uh, uh, thing. There was a lot of people doing this, and um, I kind of garnered a lot more listens from that. And then monetization came into the way. And then uh, from then on out, the pandemic, I kind of revived that right? because when I started out, it was mm-hmm. I think 27, the end of 2017, and then 2018, I released my first episode. But I didn't remain consistent because uh, college got uh, the worst out of me. And then uh, it was hard to compensate, but yeah, <laughs> uh, one mm-hmm. thing led to the other. Um, uh, when I met Roma Miklat's podcast, I said, "Wow, that's the standard!" Oh my gosh! Um, wow! <laughs> and um, <laughs> thank you. Oh my god! I, I feel was, shy. <laughs> <laughs> I I was blown away the fact that uh, when I when I saw and heard all these other podcast things. Uh, podcast and all the, the the way they did things, uh, I kind of felt like I was moonwalking while everybody was front walking because uh, everybody I, I appreciate uh, everybody's podcast, including yours. Uh, uh, and um, thank you. Uh, how I see it is that you guys uh, are well equipped with your stuff. You guys, it's funny <laughs> coming to think of it. The creation, the creation of the podcast was all backwards like i said i was moonwalking all over uh, saying mm-hmm. i was uh, moonwalking every single uh, every single thing the marketing the page it mm-hmm. was all backwards <laughs> i was flipping everything mm-hmm. backwards but uh, what i meant by that was uh, everybody had a facebook page prior to the idea through the podcast but mm-hmm. what i did was i had the rajiv doreswami page and then it was last minute I decided when the Let's Talk series, it was trans, uh, the first episode, when I released the first episode of the Let's Talk series, uh, Adrian Duarte's episode, shout out to him if he is listening to this episode, is that... Um, hey, babe! <laughs> he, he actually, um, he, his episode was actually the transition part when I decided to split Rajiv Doreswami and Rajiv show. And then it, it uh, one thing led to the other. The Facebook page was created, the Instagram page was created, and of course, the YouTube was under my name, Rajiv Doreswami. I created a brand page, which is also, also the Rajiv Show. So it was all uh, backwards prior to what you guys are doing, which you had the page, you had the idea, you had the stuff, and then boom, but a boom, you guys went with the social media, and one thing led to the other. You guys are doing phenomenal. I, I feel like I'm catching up, though. So yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, you know what, uh, Rajiv, there are no wala namang concrete rule when it comes to content creation or when it comes to starting your podcast. And it's okay. I mean, that's your journey mm-hmm. yung sa podcasting mo. It's your journey. It's fine. Ang important is you are learning and you are catching up. Coming from you, that's the really heartwarming. I felt like I got hugged by the Singapore peacock. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totoo yun. There's no, ano, there are no rules naman eh. Kasi sometimes, depende sa learning, di ba, ba pa ng bata yan eh. Iba-iba ang learning uh, journey ng bata. May iba na magaling sa exams, may iba na magaling sa actual, may ibang nag- sobrang todo aral, hmm. pero hindi pa rin perform ng... Diba? May mga ganun yeah. eh. Iba-iba yung learning curve ng tao. So, even in podcasting, I I would I believe that also applies in podcasting. Yung sa akin siguro, I would say, I'm just lucky that I already have the, the, the setup, the equipment. It's because I tried it before. I tried vlogging, so I have the, the setup. And I was blogging. So, it was a bit easier on me kasi... 
on my part to do podcasting and have everything that I need basically because my my the things that I was doing like five six years ago was already content creation and ano uh, to those who are listening who are planning to do podcast wag kayong madisheartened or wag kayong mawala ng ng pag-asa as long as you want to do it just do it all you have to do is start Tsaka make sure that you really love or you're doing this because this is what you really want to do not because this is a pastime na parang ah, for the next three months ito lang yung gagawin ko kasi when it comes to content creation you really have to put your heart soul and time and effort to it so that it will be ano it will be it will be fruitful um isang secret siguro i would say ng pagkakaroon pagkakaroon ng parang ano ba um isang secret ng <laughs> Content creation would always be consistency. And it's hard to have consistency. Kasi yun yung ano eh. Yun yung, yun yung magsusupport sa overall na effort mo eh. Yeah. Like you, everyone can start something new. Every day ilang pages ang merong Facebook page ang nagsastart. Every, every day ilang blogs ang nagsastart. Vlog, even YouTube. Uh, I remember I was I came across with this uh, video na sinabi na parang in 2019 there were around 7 million tama ba ako? 7 million new YouTube channels. So wow. imagine but not all those 7 million channels are consistently producing content, 'di ba? Hmm. Iilan lang yung magiging successful done in the next what? 1 3 1 to 3 years. Diba? Kasi everyone was just starting. Yun ang, yun ang thing when it comes to ano, content, when it comes to social media. Everyone can start a page. Everyone can start an Instagram profile. But the question is, are you consistent enough? Yun yun. That's one ano, na minsan nalilimutan natin. Because of course, for example, with what happened in this pandemic, yeah. we all had the time. Diba? Yeah. Wala tayong magawa. So, ang dami natin nagkaroon ng podcast and namin nagkaroon ng I don't know maybe blogging or maybe streaming but then after that nagbumalik na sa trabaho tapos na set aside na yung mga shows or yung mga na-create nila during the pandemic and we won't know kung babalik pa sila or matutuloy pa magkakaroon pa ng susunod na mga episodes or whatever yung mga ginawa nila during the pandemic pero kasi hindi na nila naging hindi na siya ano eh priority It was on the side. So yung don papasok yung consistency. Walang consistency, therefore, lagi lang silang ano, ningas pugon. And the reason why I'm saying this is because it happened to me. Even before the BerryDuchess.com became um, consistent, I had siguro mga limang blogs before. Wow. Because let me tell you, let me be honest with you, wow. <laughs> Rajiv. When I was starting blogging back in 2007 or 2008, 2006 yata. Hmm. It was like my online diary. I was under different ano um, pseudonym. Hmm. It's because the main reason why I was doing my blog that time is because I want to put my 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 hatred, my my galit out there. I just want to write. I just want to put my emotions and frustrations online because hmm. I know I can't do that to people. Parang hindi ko siya masasabi, pero gusto yeah. ko ilabas yung sama ng loob ko. So, it was like an online diary. Tapos, pag okay na ako, nakamove on ako, i-delete ko na yon. <laughs> Or di kaya, malilimutan ko na yon. Ilan, how many, how many blogs that I had that I totally forgot it existed. Huh. So, so you see, parang, you, first of all, you have to ask your, you have to know your why. In everything you do in life, you have to know your why. Why are you doing this to, why are you doing this thing? Hmm. Are you doing this out of uh, boredom? Are you or are you doing this because this is what you, you want to do in the next five years? Hmm. That's a, that's very important. Because when when shit hits the fan, hmm. kapag hindi ka na hindi ka na inspired, wala ka, You're running out of ideas. Gusto mo nang give up. You feel like pero kung ano pa nangyayari sa buhay ko, parang mga ganang drama. Yeah. You will go back to your why. Na parang Why? Why trauma? Why are you podcasting? Is it to please people, or is it because you want to put yourself out there and you want to develop your 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 speaking skills and you want to share the things that you learn in life with other people? And then I will realize, ah, oo nga, nagiinarte lang ako. 
So, but, so kung maga, it brings you back to your ano, original purpose. Yun yun. That's what you want, you, that's what you need to know. Ano yung why mo? Why are you doing that? Why are, why are you doing this podcast? Why are you doing this uh, type of content? Diba? So, yun. Ganon. Wow. Wow, that was... I don't know how to follow up with that. It felt like a, Ma- a Martin Luther <laughs> Jr. speech. I mean, wow. Uh, Grabe siya. <laughs> it's powerful though. I, I do agree. I mean, the fact that you've done... I I, I, I did not know you, that you've done 10. <laughs> Coming to think of it, that <laughs> one blog... That, it's, it's funny. I was uh, talking about that one blog and then you said you, you did 10. It's like, whoa. It was like taking mga five naman, hindi naman ten, mga five before the Berry Duchess <laughs> yeah. com, which is now Roma Miklat dot com, And that will change us pa din. Parang I'm holding a nice new apple that I bought off the market. I was I'm looking at Roma on the other side of the market, holding like five or ten apples that are brand new from Fiji. You know, <laughs> <It's> like, whoa, tiba <laughs> kasi. Kasi ano eh, sometimes we see we only see what's on what's in front of us eh. What's what's present, 'di ba? Parang ah, oh, pero we don't know na behind that bago ka nakarating diyan sa magandang 'yan, sa magandang presentation na 'yan, it was all hard work. Yeah. Na hindi matatawaran. Hmm. Na talagang minsan talaga it will you will doubt and daming beses you will doubt yourself. Na parang wala namang, parang ako lang lagi yung nag, nagtitingin sa blog or ako lang yung nag-consume ng content ko. But yeah. that's the thing. Darating kayo, hindi naman laging may manonood eh. But you have to believe in what you produce. Yeah. So that the people will also believe your product, ba Yeah. Mm. Wow. Powerful. Powerful. Woo! Grabe. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Interesting, beautiful, powerful, majestic, <laughs> magnificent. Every single adjective. Number six. <laughs> Number six ba? May interesting na hindi ka narinig, ha? <laughs> ah, so seven na pala. <laughs> seven na pala. <laughs> may counter ba tayo? Sana may ding-ding. Wala naman akong ding-ding. Dapat may counter. <laughs> <O nga. laughs> We, uh, But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. To me... To me, like I said in the beginning, you've set the bar, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not saying this just to please you or anything. I'm also looking at mm-hmm. others. Um, hopefully, uh, I'm also I, I also look at Huntahan Nights because Huntahan Nights uh, marketing stuff on Instagram is pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. J High's quality, Jack, and all these other guys from the community, from the PPD community, the man himself, Madame right? And Dayang. That's so yeah. true. Mm-mm. And uh, Cuenca himself, uh, everybody, I, I really love. And you guys have that standard. And I always look up to you guys. It's like, uh, it, it, this is phenomenal. And every time you guys chart, it's like, you know, uh, I often ask myself, you know, oh man, that that's pretty cool. I I, I wish I, I'd get there. I get there. I mean, I know in my in my head I'd get there as well. But yeah, you'll get there. Yes, that, that's the thing. That's the spirit. You'll get there. One day, parang you'll, you 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 sabi mo sa sarili mo. One day, I'm going to wake up and the Rajiv show will be on that chart. Uh, akala ko kakanta ka ng one day. Gulat. <laughs> Gulat nga ako dun ah. Sabi niya one day, Oy, what? She's going to sing now. You're going to sing now with the uh, thing. Raise your hand. <laughs> ano to? Bayang mag- uh, dupang hinirang. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But you'll get there, yes. Uh, yeah. And, na- like for me, hindi naman consistent eh. Pero uh, the rest, diba? They're very consistent. Kasi they, I think they really... Consistent sila sa ginagawa nila. And uh, uh, folks, for, for those who are tuning in, if you haven't heard my collaboration with uh, Roma Miklat, um, I want to say, I, I think I've said this countless of times in all the shares that I've done in her post, is that she knows how, if you guys are collaborating with uh, with her, she knows how to make you look sexy. So don't hesitate <laughs> to ask her. And, you know, <laughs> Uh, you don't even ne- need to think about it. You know, you don't need to ask her, can you make me sexy like this? She'll just make it happen and just trust the process because she can make it. She's Roma McLeod. I swear it. Um, every time I, I look no, at I that No, I think... Thing, yeah. <laughs> Oo. 
Kasi I think, you know, ano, actually, ito yun, guys. I'm just, I know, highlighting the, the the good stuff already. It's already good. It's just being highlighted. Actually, wala yun. Wala akong ginagawa dun. It's all them. It's all them. It's all my guests. They just don't realize their inner beauty. Nga, <laughs> ganon! They, they just don't realize their inner beauty. So, it's just like, when you put the spotlight on these people, talagang yeah. ano lang, na-appreciate lang nila. Like Rajiv, na-appreciate niya yung kanyang sexiness. O, oh, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> the funny part about that was, um, uh, for me, for the love of podcasting, uh, when when she released the episode, uh, prior to the recording, actually, the only thing that I had in my head was, uh, I uh, I mean, I knew I loved the episode. I actually loved the episode. In the back of my head, I want to know, oh shit, how is she, how is she going to make me? I, in my head, I never told her this. This is <laughs> this is uh, top information that you guys are hearing for the first time. When I was uh, I was thinking about how will she make me look sexy? I hope she does the black and white and the gradient and all that. Those are the things that are running through my head. I hope she does the double glue glasses. And and when she came up with the product and she sent me an email and she's... Uh, the thing, the, the emotions that ran in my thing, I was so excited. I actually wanted to take a picture of, uh, of the images. Then I just realized since she's gonna share it, I might as well share it and say that she made me look sexy because seriously, <laughs> she, she's really. By the way, Raj, maybe yeah. they were wondering what uh, what episode are we talking about? That that is actually episode seventy seven on yeah. the Rama Miklat podcast. Exactly. That was my interview with Rajiv, where I asked him. Uh, well, a little bit more about him and the show and also my five questions with Rajiv, which is very fun and interesting then. Interesting! Oh, I said it! Dagdag, dagdag sa listahan. Dagdag sa listahan. Yeah, but that's not on, that's on, not on you eh. Sa akin yun eh. So, hindi yun counted. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, man. This conversation is amazing. <laughs> Um, I, I, I'm, I, I, I always feel love when Roma Miklat ha- comes to my show. Hopefully, I, w- mm. I would love to be featured again in the Roma Miklat and uh, be sexy again. <laughs> after, after. <laughs> yes, yes, soon, soon. <laughs> Babalik si Rajiv sa aking show. Yeah. This time, I, I don't know what kind of pictures I'm going to send, but I'm going to send the wacky ones because even the wacky ones that I gave, she actually made me look sexy. It's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was Parang, possible. No, no. To, to those who haven't seen the promo post, the, the, the promo poster, he really looked like, ano, parang musician talaga si, I mean, like, he is a musician. Pero parang sobrang sikat na musician na parang who's this guy mawapatan ako ooh Roma who's this guy you know the one with the bass uh, playing the bass <laughs> may ganon eh may ganong factor eh hindi mo na ako my gosh <laughs> <laughs> oh that's ano syempre ma attitude yung yung pinili kong ano yung <laughs> pinili ko talaga ang picture man but yeah the funny part about that is um uh, the stuff that uh, the, the 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 photographs that uh, is a history between behind that photograph before we end this conversation a history behind the fo- those photographs is that um uh, what was uh, i don't even remember the photos now i'm i'm kind of actually technically as i'm uh, having this conversation i'm scrolling back oh yeah i'm scrolling back at the photos that she actually made me look sexy of um <laughs> The one where I was wearing a bonnet, uh, technically that was one of my reggae jam sessions with my dad. Uh, we were playing, I was actually mm-hmm. playing uh, rhythm guitar and at that time my my chops for lead guitar kind of took off. So I was experimental mm-hmm. and uh, it kind of, that was an amazing gig in um, uh, Big Picture uh, at that time. And mm-hmm. the other one where I was wearing shades, um, that was an unexpected uh jam session for those who uh, mm. who don't, don't know uh, it was funny um, I think this jam session um, yeah I was actually uh, I, I had a stay over with a friend's place and we were uh, he, uh, he asked my dad's permission of course because I was with my dad during that time uh, he asked me um, mm. if, if we could just uh, stop by in big picture it was actually in big picture as well 
And uh, we went, this was mm-hmm. a different uh, venue though. The, there was a band that was playing, an uh, all-girls band, I remember. And uh, the photographer was phenomenal, so phenomenal that he caught everything. And uh, uh, I think the guy who uh, who wanted to jam, hey, you just plug in your bass and let's do, just do a jam session for no reason. And then, yeah, there was a drummer mm-hmm. in the back and uh, we were just grooving and um, yeah, they took that shot. <laughs> It was unexpected. And you know what's what what I love about those pictures is that you are in the zone. Like you are not acting, you are not posing. That's one thing yeah. that I love. It. I love photos that are ano, parang taken siya ng hindi siya post. That's what I love about photos na unpost. Yun talaga yung mga gusto, gusto, gusto kong mga pictures. Because it brings out the the real person eh. Doon mo makikita siya. Like for you, you're in the zone. It, kitang-kita na ang saya-saya mo na you're, you're playing with your guitar. So, when they see your when they see your picture, ang magiging, ma- may-instill sa kanilang thought will be, ah, that is the guy who's playing a guitar. Baka musician siya. Maybe Alam mo yun, anything yeah. that's related to music, which is really your yeah. thing naman talaga, diba? True. You really love playing uh, the guitar and you're a musician, diba? Yeah. So, yun. So, so again, more... just highlighting yung totoong <laughs> ano, ikaw. <laughs> one more thing about that bass guitar that I was playing actually is um, my dad, uh, th- there's a story, I think I, I said this in my episode, my dad's episode uh, during the last years where I featured him. Uh, there's a very uh, very interesting story behind that. Uh, pang ilan na yan? Nine. <laughs> Kalimutan ko na yung bilang. <laughs> yeah. Eight, pang walo pa lang. <laughs> ah, pang walo pa lang, oh. <laughs> Sobrang excited. Um, the funny thing about that <laughs> Pag was... Nakasambu, pag nakasampu, may isang daan ako kay Raj. <laughs> <laughs> Suko ko na dun, no? <laughs> so, uh, coming back to the story at hand... My dad had an accident with his uh, with his left hand. So uh, when it comes to playing the bass, I, I actually I'm a second generation bass player. When I um, when uh, he got home this custom made bass guitar, it was not really the size of a jazz bass. And what I mean by a jazz bass, a jazz bass is much bigger and much fatter, and the sound is much stronger. And you know. The fretboard, the spacing between the fretboard, the, the stuff be- between the fretboard was much more wider. So mostly the pinky, uh, when you're playing with the bass, most likely uh, the pinky is the, the one that struggles the most when, when you're playing the bass. So uh, my dad had an, uh, I don't know, an accident. I don't really remember the story, but uh, he had a missing thing in near his pinky finger of his left hand. So he got that custom-made bass and then... Um, there was a time where every time I used to jam, the, actually when I used to play his bass, I used to get so fed up because uh, I used to bug him a lot and I used to break, uh, this is sound, this might sound weird but don't get it in the wrong way. I used to break the G string mm-hmm. of his bass guitar, you know, the, the last string, the, the, <laughs> the highest yeah. string and uh, it yeah. was mostly because of the tuning. I, I, at that time, my hearing was very off and I over ex- mm-hmm. overstretched the string to the point that it breaks. Yeah. So my dad, it will flick. yeah. I I mean it is funny uh, that uh, when you have a bass guitar, it, it, it's normal that the strings are supposed to be strong. It's not not meant to break. And mm-hmm. <laughs> in my case, I also ha- I also suffer from hyper uh, hyperhidrosis, which is uh, sweaty palms. I think I don't know if that's the mm-hmm. word hyper. So every time I play the bass or play the guitar, especially the steel string guitars. They're most likely to rust the very week that I changed the strings mm. <laughs> because of yes. the things, sweaty yes. palms. Even though I I, I, I I wipe the strings, it still ends up rusting in the end. So it was kind of um, my problem. And then my dad, behind my back, we, we were celebrating my birthday. My dad uh, called up the one who did the custom-made bass guitar. And then uh, the, the one who made the bass guitar. And then uh, told him to make one th- that that guitar that you you guys are seeing that the silver guitar, and the guy mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. made it. But there was a lot of flaws in it. There was uh, the fretboard, the the, the G string G string on the fretboard was actually flying off of the fret once you go down to the twelve, which I didn't notice. It was really stretched mm-hmm. to the point that the fret would actually flicker off to the 
edge edge of the air. Basically, when you're pressing it downwards, you have to press it inwards into the fret instead of uh, pressing it uh, towards the fret, downwards to the fret. So it was kind of um, yeah. It, those are a lot of flaws. Uh, the buttons. There was so many things. But yeah, I kind of cherish. I think I still have that baby with me. Uh, unfortunately, mm-hmm. she's not functionable. Uh, anymore, but yeah, <laughs> that was that's the story of that bass. And uh, uh, the the guy who did it, I really salute him, Bobby. If he's tuning into this episode, cheers. Um, yeah, and uh, I love how he did the, that that guitar. Even though it was so flawed, it was actually the size. If you, if you guys are seeing it right now, it's actually the size of an, a normal electric guitar. It was meant to be an electric guitar mm-hmm. actually, but then you know that happened, and uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of history was made from that uh, thing. A couple of gigs were made from that, but I love it. <laughs> That's the the story mm-hmm. behind that, uh, which was uh, first time for those who are tuning in. That is the first hand information if you've reached this portion of the conversation. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations if you reached this portion of the convo. <laughs> Since we have 18 interesting, I'm going to finish off with three interesting just to get it off the way because I I really am a perfectionist <laughs> and I want it to go down to 10. So I'm going to say interesting three yes. times. <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. I 11 na pala kasi interesting. <laughs> So yeah. Awesome. Um first of all before we actually end the conversation uh, I'm mm-hmm. sure definitely a lot of my listeners would love to connect with you via social media and find you and probably perhaps mm-hmm. you make them look sexy. How do they find you <laughs> in social media? <laughs> <laughs> they might get they might get confused. Ano, kung ano, what is sexy? What is the sexy that they're talking about here? <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Rajiv, for this opportunity. And uh, hi again, my name is Rama, and I am the host and producer of the Rama McLeod podcast. And um, you can you can listen to my podcast on Spotify, Anchor.fm, uh, so where my <laughs> Apple podcast, and wherever you're you're listening your podcasts from. Is that right? Kung saan man kayo nakikinig ng inyong podcast. But if you want to watch some of my vidcast, because I have some episodes where I have vidcast, you can go to my YouTube channel or Facebook. Just follow me. And I'm also, sorry, I'm also on Instagram. Just look for at the Rama McLeod podcast. And you can also visit my website, www.ramamiklat.com. And uh, you can send me a message, say hi, leave me your comments, suggestions, violent reactions, pwede rin naman. <laughs> so, yon. Ayon. Thank you so much, Rajiv, for, for letting me guest on the show. Yeah. Padagdag din for those who are uh, an add-on for those who really uh, who, who uh, want to understand. You guys, you gotta go to the Roma McLeod and if you guys are in the message bar, you're welcome. I'm going to give you some good advice before you actually <laughs> have a collaboration with Roma. Type in, make me look sexy and send that message to her in her Instagram and her Facebook. <laughs> and oh my God. You know, I, if I get flooded with that message, I'm going to blame you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the entire point behind oh that. My gosh. <laughs> Alam ko na Rajiv, when when we post this episode, the official hashtag is hashtag make me look sexy. <laughs> People will be like, what the fuck is this? Hindi pa, dagdag pa ro. To make that even much longer, make me look sexy roams. Ayun! <laughs> or make me look sexy Roma. Uh, ayun! <laughs> oh my God. I dadagdag ko yun dun sa description na ito. <laughs> Hashtag the Rajiv Show. Let's make that, ano, let's, let's make that possible. Oh, yeah. Sige. Ipatrend natin yan. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi ayaw ko gamitin yung Donald the Trump fuck is this <laughs> Make me look great again. Parang ano yun? Parang oh Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, the hat. Yung nasa, naka-stitch sa happy oh. Donald Trump, diba? Uh, Make America great again. Ayaw ko yung ganun again. eh. Make me look sexy, Roma. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> My God, guys. <laughs> We're just kidding, ha? Huwag <laughs> <We're> na natakot. <laughs> Good luck na, Roms. I'm giving you advance warning. Good luck Kumanda na if you get that. Kumanda ka talaga, Radiva, and receive those messages. I'm going to send it to you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to de- blame you. Send a meme. Thumbs up, This meme. is on record, guys. <laughs> Uh, I hope I get to have you back uh, probably season 4, season 5. I still have no idea uh, prior to the recording of this episode. I still do not know how how I'm gonna uh, recruit with the uh, thing season 5, uh, season 5 and so on and so forth. But I hope I get to have you yeah. guys again. All the guests that I've uh, uh, from from here and from the next coming I mean, I'd love to have you guys back again because it's it's always a pleasure to have a conversation with you guys. So yeah, with that in yeah, mind, yeah, just let me know. Drop me a message. You know, yeah. where to, I know where to find me. Uh-oh. Yeah, I know what to send also to you. So no worries. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I want to thank my guests, the peacock from Singapore, the majestic, <laughs> the legendary, the phenomenal, sexy maker, Roma McLeod herself. <laughs> thank you, Rajiv. And uh, can I just say before I leave uh, the episode and your show, sure. uh, con- Congratulations on your podcast and just continue doing whatever it is that you are doing. You are doing great and um, more power. Thank you. I thank can't you. wait for you. I can't wait to see you. I know to see. I can't wait to see you. Uh, parang ano ba? Maging successful and to see you on the charts. Oh, di ba? I manifest natin yan. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's get this. Uh, let's get the listens out there. Uh, yeah. We always. We always have to, you know. If you're tuning yes, in and you yes, like the content, course, yes. you genuinely love the content, share it with your friends, brothers, sisters, grandma. Let everybody listen, you know. This is some good stuff, mm-hmm. some good, amazing story from the Let's Talk series. And uh, this Let's Talk series is never going to end. It looks like <laughs> that, that's how it is prior <laughs> to the recording of this, uh, mm-hmm. uh, this uh, thing. There's a lot and a lot of people, a lot of amazing stories, a lot of inspirational stories. So if you like the story, share it. Um, and yeah, and <laughs> uh, I mm-hmm. love doing. I love doing this. I, I'm I'm in it for the fun and the laughs, like what we did with uh, Roma McLeod. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, you had fun talking to me, Rajiv. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. Uh, at least uh, if I could, uh, if I could compensate by the fact that you made me look sexy, I hope I made you look beautiful <laughs> without the makeup. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I'm gonna hunt you talaga pag ilumabas na ano ha? On record talaga sinabi I'm gonna hunt you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding guys. Yeah. 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 So for those who are tuning in um, I hope you learned a thing or two and I hope you were entertained in this conversation. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, like and share, subscribe, all do all those fancy stuff. And I will see you folks in the next episode. Cheers, folks. Bye.